figure out where I'm at here. I know I'm in Isaiah. And it looks like I'm on 8. Isaiah 8. And I am not giving no excuses. I just can't do it and blah blah blah. Alright. Here we go. Isaiah 8. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen Concerning Mahai Shal Shalah has baths. All right, no good at all right, uh, these names. And I took unto me a faithful witness to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jebiachana. Okay. And I went into the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name, that big old long M word, M A H E R S H A L A L dash H A S H dash B A Z. That's a long name there. Um. For before the child shall have knowledge and cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spools of Samaria, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke un also unto me again, saying, For as much as this people refuse the waters of Shiro that sh go swiftly and rejoice, and reason, and remaya re her son. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong, many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels, and go over all his banks. In other words, from the sound of it, there's going to be a flood. And he shall pass through Judah, and he shall overflow, and go over, and he shall reach even to the net, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of the Lamb, O Ishmael. All right, now, Ishmael people are the um, Iran Iranian, ain't it, Rick? Ishmael? Rick, what? ain't Ishmael the Iranians? Yeah. Okay, he says, yeah. Associate yourself, O oh, you people, um, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give ear all ye of far country. Grid your, yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Grid yourself, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Now, why is he mentioned it twice here? Because he, look, this is serious. So, when it's mentioned twice like that, this is serious. All right. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand. And instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say you not a confederacy to all them that whom this people shall say confederacy, neither 
fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of the host himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. That's right. Um, let Okay, I'll be right back. Back to this. Um, your your fear should always be in the Lord, not in man. Man will give you fear to control you. Like I know you're going to get mad at me. Like the government, they want to take away the guns, right? Well, how are they going to do it? They're going to take the guns away by the gun. They're not going to come in and say. Oh, give me your gun, please. No, huh? They're going to come in with guns. And if you don't turn over your gun, you're going to die. Okay? All right. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel for a gain and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now look, God is a, right here it says that the God is a stone, a stumbling stone, and they're a rock of offense. They cannot stand the name of Jesus Christ. They can't. They don't like it. And I'm, I'm not talking about the uh, ones that have changed and gave their life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm talking about the ones that don't want to believe in him. Alright. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. And I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for sons and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwells in Mount Zion. So, he's saying that his children are a sign of what's going to happen. In other words, a na every name that is in here means something. Okay? So, um, I'm not going to go and hunt down these names and do all that. But they mean something, and they will tell you what, uh, what played out. All right. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizard that peep, and that mutter, uh, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Right, the, these people over there, they believe in going into hunting up dead people and talking about talking to dead people and all. And, I mean, familiar spirit. What's familiar spirit? That's your kinfolk that's died. I mean, that's like me trying to go and, and find mom's spirit. You know? All right. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. In other words, it's, they have nothing but darkness in them. I mean, look at the world today. Okay? And I don't think they have everything to do with everything that's going on in it. But I think they have a big part in it. Alright. <clears throat> um, they have no Jesus Christ in them. Jesus Christ is the light. And they shall pass through it heartily instead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and Look upward. All right. They're going to curse their God. Whatever God they had at that time. And they're going to look upward. They're going to look up, up at the true creator. All right. And they shall look into the earth. And behold trouble and darkness. Dimness of anguish. And they shall be driven to darkness. All right. Now. Let, we're not talking about there is no light. We're talking about darkness of evil. There's so much 
evil's coming out and all. It's like, well, where is the good in people? Where is the good? You can't hardly see it because everybody is out for their self. And they can care less about you. I mean, that's just all there is. There's darkness. There's no... There's, there's so many laws that there's no laws. Can you understand what I'm saying? They take away what God has said. Look, you don't covet your neighbor. You don't go out and kill. You don't steal. You don't, you don't do these things. You don't respect. Okay? All right, we're on chapter number nine. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. <coughs> when at the first... He lightly afflicted the land of Zidium and the land of Nephila, and afterward did more graciously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light that they dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shined. In other words, he's saying that these people saw Jesus Christ, okay? And they had their they changed their way. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy of the harvest. And as men rejoice, they divide the spoils. For thou hast spoken the yet oh, see, for they have broken the yoke of the burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the days of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is the confusing, confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born. A, let's see. A, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now I want y'all to pay attention. This is Jesus Christ. Okay? Now the government shall be upon his shoulder. Alright, I want y'all to think about what is the government doing on Jesus Christ's shoulder? He's on your sh the government's on your shoulder too. You're carrying the same burden, like just like Jesus did. Jesus did not go through anything that you would not go through. So, if Jesus Christ did not like the government, right here is the word, and I talk about the government, how bad they are all the time, and here the government is on his shoulder. So y'all just sit and think about that. And then you'll say, wait a minute, the law enforcement, it's law enforcement. They're going to enforce their laws. They don't enforce God's laws. They're against God. They're not going to enforce God's law. They're going to enforce their man's laws. And man's law is more grievous than God's law. I don't have God's law. Okay, at the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon the, his kingdom, to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will, pour, will perform this. In other words, God's law is going to go on anyway. No matter how much they try to throw it away, they are not going to because God's law is for henceforth, from henceforth, forever and ever. Alright. Alright, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it had lightened up Israel, and all the people shall know, even Ephraim, and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and scoffulness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stone, these sycamores are cut down, but we will change them to cedars. All right, they're, instead of making it back the way it was, they're changing everything around. All right, 
Um, I don't know which is more stronger, the sycamore or the cedar, but I will say that nine chances out of ten you go and check them out, and you'll see which one, what what each one represents, because it will represent something. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the avengers of reason against him and join his enemies together. These Assyrians before and the Philistines oh, before, no, that have been, yeah, and they been. shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Look, God says, my hand is still stretched out. My hand is here. Alright, for the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. See, they're not even caring about God. Therefore, well, look, therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and the honorable, he is the head and the prophet that teaches lies. He is the tail. Well, see, now if we kept in God's word and we fought for the Ten Commandments, we fought, and I'm talking about our ancestors. If they would have fought for all of this and all, and when they say, hey, um, from now on, we're going to put up speed signs, and if you don't obey them, you're going to have to go to court. If they would have fought that, if they would have fought, you know, here comes, uh, what, CPS? They come and get your kids? If they'd have fought against it, now this junk would have happened. We wouldn't be where we are. If we were stuck by God's law and God's law only, we'd have been better off. <clears throat> All right, therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. God don't have no mercy for these people that do not want to recognize him. And I'm saying recognize him. Everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer and every mouth spoken folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand, his one hand, is stretched out still. So I'm wondering, now, is this the, the creator God or is this Jesus Christ? And the reason why I'm I'm asking this question is, is when Jesus went to the cross, he had both hands out. But this is saying one hand. So I'm gonna have to question this, and I'm gonna do some thinking about it, and you probably won't know unless I mention it in another video I have that you know my quilting video. But I'm gonna do some thinking about it. All right, for witness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and the thorns, and shall kindle the thickness, the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Though the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as fuel of fire, no man shall spare his brother. In other words, they're not, uh, it's like they're going to ki start killing each other. And, um, and he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. In other words, you're going to eat your arm, is what he's saying here. <coughs> so who knows? This may be something that has to do with the mark of the beast, okay? Because, think about it, if you can't buy and sell and you can't eat, and uh, what are you going to do? I mean, this is just my own opinion. Alright, uh, Manasseh, Ephraim, uh, Ephraim and Ephraim, Messiah, and Manasseh, I mean, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Alright, so we're going to quit right here. That's 8 and 9. And we'll pick up on it again one day. Don't know when, but we'll do it.
<laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I'll be thinking about what I read. Hugs and kisses. Alright.